uh, capital in order to be able to generate profits from it. So that is the fundamental difference between investors and property buyers. A person buying their first, their first home, for example, is worried about the value they're receiving at that moment in time. A property investor is worried about the value they're going to receive and the, the value that they can extract from these properties. Now, why this is important in the question of whether um, a, a purchaser sh or an investor rather should allow the utilization of their purchase price or a deposit prior to transfer um, or registration of the property into their name is the fact that um, you can utilize it to leverage a better bargaining position and to leverage a better purchase price. So to give you an example of this, if you're aware that a seller has outstanding debts with the municipalities, as, as an example, and they don't have the cash in order to be able to pay those debts, they are going to struggle to sell this property in the open market to a first time home buyer that doesn't understand how this works. And a first time home buyer would more than likely not be willing to put up cash in order to assist the seller in dealing with their affairs. Whereas an investor may very well be willing to do it, but upon certain conditions and again these conditions would depend on whether the, uh, the purchaser or the investor is risk averse or not so if, as an example sometimes the investor might want to do it as a loan and can even register mortgage bond over the property if need be um, the purchaser can take occupation of the property as an example and can secure the the payment of this deposit in one form or another be it um, a reduction of the purchase price with the right of occupation, uh, which gives it a level of security because now it actually holds the property and possesses the property. And obviously the terms of the contract. So for example, I uh, recently did a deal where this was very much the case and it was about a million rand deposit that was paid in order to cover debt. And my advice to the client was, there's nothing wrong with doing it, but it's understanding where your risk lies. Uh, simply paying a million rand in round number um, without first assert, um, determining or being able to ascertain what the actual debt of the municipality is or whatever debt um, you might be looking at is important because you don't want to overpay and allow access to all your money unnecessarily. So what is the debt that's due to the municipality? Um, now, the second question uh, you want to be, or the second aspect that you want to be able to address in order to mitigate your risk is when exactly this money can be utilized. So that's another example. You don't simply want to pay a deposit and from day one, the money is utilized when it need not be utilized. So rates clearance figures, as an example, on something that you need to acquire at the beginning of the transaction is actually something you can start acquiring towards the end of, of the transaction. In fact, you probably should, bearing in mind that they expire. Um, so it's you want to sort it out at a point in time where you know that the transfer is definitely going to go ahead. Um, so when the money is actually going to be released, it's also important because you'd want to make sure that the seller signs everything that they need to sign before this money is released because this is your money. It's still held on your behalf. So it only gets paid over to the municipality once you know for certain all transfer documents are signed. And if you had to go to court to compel the transfer, it would be a very, very easy process. And the third thing that I normally try and suggest and throw in is maybe some form of consent. Uh, so that it's not made determinable only by the conveyance who often is hired by the seller and might have some bias. Uh, so there might also be a requirement that um, the investor actually authorizes this, but that its authority or consent is not unreasonably withheld. And I think to a certain degree, if you've managed to get a better purchase price by doing this, you can mitigate your risks and it's not necessarily a bad idea. Right, so yes, thank you very much, Dave. You know, obviously it is doable, but it's just